Hello. I know that we haven't been doing many of the pre-roll comments for a while, but we wanted to take a moment to sincerely thank you all. We, the members of Goblin Lore, just recently crossed the 50 episode threshold and passed over a year of existence. And we really, really wanted to thank all of you for your support, your encouragement, your appreciation, your following our work, you're recommending our work. Those of you that also donate to us financially, we are so grateful for that. However you contribute to this goblin community, we really truly appreciate you. And and frankly, we wouldn't be able to do the work the way that we want to do it without your help, support, and love. And so Alex, Hobbs, and I truly just wanted to say thank you from the bottoms of our hearts. The, this is... Uh, this has been an incredible year to be making content and, and to be a part of a community in, in an even more um, connected and what we feel is, is an important way. Um, secondly, you'll notice that we are still the Goblin Lore Podcast. Uh, episode 50, we wanted to do a, a sort of a fun anniversary um, Planar Chaos style podcast where we let Chase Carroll, who is a famed fairy fan uh, take over the show and uh, sort of run it the way she wanted. So we had a blast doing that. It was awesome to have Chase on a number of times, and we are pumped to be back on our goblin train. But beware, we might be talking about fairies today. Stay tuned. Now, without any further ado, let's get to the show. Hello, Podwalkers, and welcome to another episode of Goblin Lore. This episode is a solo episode featuring just me, Joe Redman, your host. I am at Findhorn on Twitter, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about some of the previews and new information that we've gotten released about uh, the story of Throne of Eldraine. Or the the title of the ebook that will be published is The Wildered Quest, of course, by the excellent Kate Elliott. I'm I'm really intrigued by some of the information that we got in there, and I wanted to use this small little solo episode to mention the uh, topic, the real world topic, or or I guess story trope topic of a rogues gallery as part of this. So, uh, just to sort of lay the groundwork uh, in the Magic: The Gathering world, the bit of information that we got about Throne of Eldraine was thanks to a chapter preview on the Dutch website bol.com, B-O-L.com. And uh, in that, the, this ebook publisher, you know, released chapter previews of the Wildered Quest for us to look at, you know, prior to buying the ebook, essentially. Um, in there, we see the first chapter, we see the return of... Garrick Wildspeaker, the Green Planeswalker, now Green Black, um, possibly Mono Black. I'm not sure exactly where he's at at this point. Um, the Green Beastmaster and Planeswalker Hunter is returning to Magic's story. And, you know, after wandering the multiverse to slaughter Planeswalkers and exact his revenge, after being cursed by Liliana and the Chain Veil, he is back. Uh, plus, we now get the introduction of a new character, the Fey Planeswalker Oko. Uh, Fey meaning fairy, of course. Uh, and it seems that Oko might be from the Plane of Eldraine. We're not exactly sure yet. Um, there's no indication of that yet. But Oko also seems to have sort of a, a green blue power set profile. Uh, we see Oko trapping Garrick in a spell of vines and uh you know nettles and and thorns he also then sort of probes garrick's mind so you know the nature control sort of hints at a green uh slice and then the mind control telepathy is you know of course a blue power set uh so this is all really cool stuff uh really interesting that we have our first fey planeswalker ever we have garrick coming back to the story a big deal um but what this, I think, hints at, along with an end to the War of the Spark story that we've talked about uh, plenty, because a lot changed and a lot was impacted by the War of the Spark, 
is that there is going to be a rogues gallery developed for Magic the Gathering antagonists. So what this means is uh, there are going to be not just one big bad, one villain. Uh, Magic for a long time has sort of dealt with, you can call it a rogues gallery, but it's really more of a a few big bads running around and making mayhem. Um, there was the Phyrexians, one of the first villains. I, I guess even prior to the Phyrexians, we could say Yogmoth himself was a big bad opposed to the Thrawn, the, the Dominarian society uh, way back in, in the literally the Halcyon days of the plane. Uh, then, of course, Yogmoth helped build and develop the Phyrexians, and the Phyrexians as an as an entity were a, a big bad. They were the big bad all the way from the Urza storylines through the Weatherlight saga uh, into the invasion block, and then, uh, you know, ending, of course, with the Apocalypse for a while. And then we got their return in the uh, Mirrodin mega, I guess we could call it the Mirrodin arc, Mirrodin through Fifth Dawn and then the Scars of Mirrodin story as well. Uh, the Phyrexians have been revived in a new form and exist out in the multiverse and are trying to escape uh, the plane of New Phyrexia. So there's one big bad. Then, of course, we've also had Nicol Bolas in a more modern time has been developed from just a random legend in uh, early magic cards to the nefarious plotting villain uh, sort of hiding in the shadows and, and machining everything to, you know, essentially what we found out in War of the Spark is regain the power that he had as a pre-mending planeswalker. So the Phyrexians were the earliest big bads. You had Nicol Bolas, uh, and I guess if you want to go chronologically in the story, Nicol Bolas did come first. But uh, you also sort of had the Cabal in those interim years when Dominaria was devastated, um, the Cabal was a, you know, the, it, they were essentially Dominaria's mafia. And from the Odyssey into the Onslaught blocks, they were kind of the, the large entity that was wreaking havoc on the plane and causing all sorts of uh, nonsense to happen. And then, of course, in the later years, you had the Eldrazi. Uh, in the most recent couple of years, we've had to deal with the Eldrazi um, emerging on Zendikar and then, uh, you know, needing to be defeated uh, or retrapped in the case of Emrakul uh, in Battle for Zendikar and Shadows Over Innistrad blocks. Uh, so you've got these these big entities, these, these you know, world-spanning, multi-world-spanning entities, but those big bads sort of emphasize, I guess, an era. They're, they're not, even though Bolas overlapped with the Eldrazi and, and helped, you know, cause the Eldrazi crisis... You know, even though obviously Bolas was doing stuff in the background during the Cabal, uh, you know, even though the Phyrexians overlapped with the beginning of, of Bolas, all of this stuff, all of those arcs were relatively separate and sort of represented their own epoch of magic story. What we're now seeing with the defeat of Bolas and the wrapping up of the War of the Spark, which sort of, you know, concluded what they've been calling the Bolas arc, the Bolas saga in magic storytelling, is, I think, a, a beginning of a rogues gallery, which we've talked about in previous episodes. And that means that you have a number of recurring characters, a number of smaller villains, not necessarily inconsequential villains, but villains that are more independent agents, all doing their own sorts of things, while the protagonists try to stop them, bring them to justice, whatever, what have you. So a good a good example of this is the uh, the Legion of Doom from DC Comics. There you have a number of villains like... So originally, at least in the TV show in the Legion of Doom, you have Black Manta, who is sort of Aquaman's polar opposite. You have Giganta, you have Toy Man, you have the Riddler, Bizarro, uh, sort of a, a mirror image of Superman... The Scarecrow, Lex Luthor, Captain Cold, Cheetah, Solomon Grundy, Gorilla Grodd, Brainiac, and Sinestro. Now, the Legion of Doom is obviously a, a well-assembled sort of group. They all, they I don't know if you've seen the cartoon, but they all 
you know, meet in this hidden underwater, buried in a swamp, Hall of Doom, that's what it's called. And they would all, you know, uh, uh, have this meeting in essentially like a council room, a, a, like a city council chamber, and argue about what their next plan would be to take over the world. And they would, you know, fight a little bit and squabble, and but would then come up with this joint plan to do evil. Um, I don't, I don't think we're going to see something nearly that cartoony and hokey uh, that that Magic pulls up. There might be some of of that. You know, we do see uh, Oko reigning in Garrick and twisting his mind. And I don't know if if Oko is going to be an antagonist. Uh, that remains to be seen. But uh, certainly, I think that Garrick could be the first member of this rogues gallery that is assembling that we see put into uh, the new arc of magic story, the beginning of the future of magic story. Now, we do know that a number of the members that were involved in Bolas's plot uh, during War of the Spark are on the run. That is that is a part of uh, the story that is going to be still explored, and I'm sure those characters are also going to be in the rogues gallery, essentially. So those three that uh, Niv-Mizzet identified as the main targets for the members of, of the not of the Gatewatch, but of the Planeswalkers that were defending Ravnica and the multiverse. The three main targets for them to track down are Dovin Bon, Liliana Vess, and Tezzeret. So I think it's pretty clear that those three are also going to be added to the uh, magic story protagonist's rogues gallery, um, the assembled group of antagonists that we see. Now, also, this is another thing that I, I want to state about a rogues gallery, at least in the comic book trope, that I believe magic is going to do differently, slightly differently at least. I don't know that it's going to be fully exactly Legion of Doom style, where they're all stated villains, they are all evil, they are all trying to either bring down the hero, or trying to do harm to society, or doing something specifically greedy and wrong. Oko doesn't seem to have that kind of uh, penchant, doesn't seem to have that kind of desire. Oko specifically states to Garrick in this Throne of Eldraine Wildered Quest preview that he wants to travel from plane to plane and bring down unruly tyrants and the wealthy who oppress the poor. And so Oko actually seems to be kind of like a fairy Robin Hood. However, you know, there is a threat to established order that that kind of thing presents. And so the Gatewatch, who are a very status quo sort of organization, may consider Oko a threat. And so Oko might be added to the uh, Rose Gallery, essentially. I'll wait for you all to uh, mentally make your Jace is a cop jokes. Okay, great. So in any case, there are a number of ways that we could see this this assemblance of antagonists work out. And to, in fact, you know, I'm sure that Obnixilis is going to be a part of this. Obnixilis is uh, sort of a vengeful, hateful, cruel uh, planeswalker, demon, half-demon planeswalker, who did ally with the Gatewatch during the War of the Spark. However, once that was done, he was like, cool, peace out. I am... It was solely so that I could survive. That is why I did that. Same thing happened with Tybalt, the half-devil uh, planeswalker. And I think we could see a similar thing occurring with Davriel Kane, the shadow mage mind manipulator. Same thing with Ashiok, uh, who we didn't really see much of in War of the Spark. Uh, so all of these sort of, you know, more selfish characters could run afoul of the quote-unquote, greater good, and therefore could be considered part of this rogues gallery. Now, I think it's interesting to think about this in context of, of a rogues gallery term, because if you go back and look at the beginning, the etymology of the term rogues gallery, we actually find that it was originated, the concept, I guess, was originated uh, back in 1855 by Alan Pinkerton, who was the founder of the Pinkerton National Detective Agency. If you don't know what that is or aren't fully aware of the mid-19th century labor history of the United States, the Pinkertons were notorious for being hired by corporations and large uh, sort of industry magnates to go and dig up dirt on labor leaders 
and sort of stalk them and harass them and, uh, you know, sometimes make up things about their personal lives and even had were called in to a number of strikes as guards during these union disputes, uh, specifically in uh, blue collar industries, uh, coal, iron and lumber. Uh, as well as the Great Railroad Strike of 1877, the Battle of Blair Mountain in 1921. So they were ostensibly a group, uh, an organization dedicated to helping maintain order, but they were used by the powers that be in the status quo to enforce the status quo, to keep the powerful powerful and the oppressed oppressed. So I find it interesting too that the first possible antagonist we see and i think that's what this first chapter of the wildered quest is setting up oko to be in this story is the antagonist i find it fascinating number one that magic is giving us an antagonist who isn't a a character with black in their color pie at all that is fairly infrequent we do have an idea to do an episode on non-black antagonists and villains in the future i think that would be a very interesting to talk about especially once this story gets released next week two that the agency ostensibly you know there to protect truth and justice and and reveal uh the secrets is manipulated in their purpose to uh undermine the greater good in in many senses. I also want to point to another part of the origination of the rogues gallery term, and that would be its use. Uh, the the origination of the term actually came from uh, late eight, late nineteenth century New York City Police Department. So the NYPD uh, were the ones who created it, uh, and specifically Inspector Thomas Burns uh, wrote a book in which uh, the the term rose gallery was used frequently uh, in 1886. So this is an this is an old term. This is an old concept. It's gone back, you know, what now, 130, 140 years in America, and and I'm sure had been used prior. This establishment of taking pictures of criminals, putting them up on a wall, sort of the like most wanted posters, and. You know, any time that a criminal would be brought in, they would be compared to the pictures specifically to see like, okay, did is this somebody that we've been looking for for a while? But again, this is a concept that was originally identified as a way to bring order, to bring criminals to justice, to help the greater society, but instead at points has led to manipulation and greater harm. Now, I don't think that anybody would say that uh, the apprehension of former uh, FBI Most Wanted rogues gallery members Al Capone or Bonnie and Clyde or anything like that. I think everyone agrees that it's probably better that people like that are taken off the streets so that they don't wreak havoc on society. But some of the things that were happening, taking the opportunity to bring those in power back to earth to say you are the same as us you don't get to be better so i I do wonder you know if this is a deliberate parallel being drawn between the pinkertons and the gatewatch i i I might not be obviously that specific but i think there is an interesting parallel to be drawn and i do think that kate elliott who's a fantastic writer and the creative department uh the story department at wizards is probably very aware of wanting to move the Gatewatch away from a Justice League type role into a little bit more of an ambiguous sort of exploration of what it means to truly defend justice in the multiverse. What what does it mean to be the heroes in the multiverse? Does that mean sometimes allowing chaos to topple a tyrant, even if the status quo is harmed? That's that's an interesting thing that I think we'll see. And I do think that this establishment of a rogues gallery and this connection to the rogues gallery uh, originating could be a, a, a nice sort of lens to look at the beginning of Magic Story's new chapter with. I think it will be an interesting parallel to see where Magic Story goes with Oko, our new fey, our new fey planeswalker, and whether or not this is sort of the signpost being planted in the ground 
as the establishment of the Gatewatch's rogues gallery, and whether that means the Gatewatch are going to be cops or are going to be, for lack of a better term, the Avengers. That's our show. You can find the podcast at Goblin Lore Pod on Twitter or email any questions, comments, or concerns to goblinlorepodcast at gmail.com. If you'd like to support your friendly neighborhood gobslugs, you can do so at patreon.com slash goblinlorepod. Our music is by Wintergotten, who you can find at wintergotten.com. That's winter, G-A-T-A-N dot com. Logo by Stephen Raphael on Twitter at Stephen Raffle. Goblin Lore is a presentation of Hipsters of the Coast, which you can find at hipstersofthecoast.com or at hipstersmtg on Twitter. Thank you all for listening. And remember, goblins, like snowflakes, are only dangerous in numbers.